Texas on TT. Go! And level coins. David Witherspoon, you must be one of the nicest boys in the whole school. He's a demented, sexist bully. You think maybe the colonel will fix his wagon, do you? It's your wagon that'll get fixed. I said this isn't fair. If you wanted fair, Cadet Witherspoon, you should have stuck with the Girl Scouts. I dream I'm a princess or a dancer or president of the United States. Grandpa says it's good for people to have dreams. It makes people happier. But sometimes my dreams turn into nightmares and I just want to wake up. Grandpa says that's okay too. It gets me up and out of bed. I was sure I'd be the first in line. How'd you beat me? I think I broke the record for the 100 yard dash. Boy, F15. Yeah, I'm going to fly one of those someday. Who's first? Uh, she is. <laughs> All right, then, Miss, uh... Witherspoon. Chris Witherspoon. Please come in, Miss Witherspoon. Impressive display, don't you think? What? Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. I'm really excited about the school opening up the Junior ROTC program. It's good to hear. The Air Force is very proud of its Junior Reserve Officer Training Program. Take a seat. So tell me a little about yourself, Miss Witherspoon. Well, I'm a sophomore. And all my other courses are college prep. I want to get my pilot's license. And like I said, I'm really excited about joining the ROTC class. So you can get your pilot's license? Well, for that, yes. But the Air Force has been a goal of mine for as long as I can remember. What I really want is to get into the Air Force Academy. Maybe someday the space program. Pretty lofty goals, young lady. Very good. Well. Here you go. Grab a desk back there and fill these out. Uh, Sergeant Sprague, would you bring the next applicant in, please? Yes, sir. Sorry. Excuse me. Grandpa says it's because I'm from the Midwest. He says I've got a green thumb. Oh, sure. Let's see. It's not really green. It just means that I've got a talent when it comes to drawing things. Okay, let's see this super garden. There. That's a garden. What are they? Squash vines. What vines? Squash, you know. They get about this big, and then you cut them off and bake them and eat them. They're delicious. Just wait until I bring one of these squash to school, leave it on Mrs. Thompson's desk. That's when this thumb really pays off. Want a soda? OK. I'll be right back. Gus, I want to compliment you and your Monona Club on what you guys are doing. I mean, you are honoring the men of this town who were lost in Vietnam. Well, it's about time something like that is done, don't you think? That's true. And the person that you have picked to dedicate the memorial, excellent choice. He, he's a hometown boy. He's a real war hero. Marvelous. 
Here, here he comes now. And since Mayor Hudson can't be here, I, I guess I'll just fill in for him. Wait a minute, Buzz. You're a Democrat. That was before I had a chance to be the mayor. Hello, Colonel. Well, gentlemen, I'm sorry I'm a little late here. Uh, small town, you wouldn't think there'd be a traffic problem. <laughs> well, now, how can I be of help? Well, we still have to plan the memorial, sir. All right. Uh, well, it'll be the afternoon, so why don't we uh, face the audience away from the sun? Two dignitaries over there. Uh, and a microphone right through here for those who wish to say something. As for myself, I have a speech that I think is appropriate for the situation. And we were hoping to have some special place of honor for those families who lost someone, maybe some kind of special seating or something. OK. Uh, Put them right over there. Oh, that won't work, sir. I'm sorry, but not at this time of the afternoon. Uh, bear with me. Uh... Uh. Oh, there. Oh, see that? You can set your watch by it. 3:45. I'm sorry. Good call. Well, all right. Uh, come over there. Anything else? There, there's the matter of the plaque that's supposed to go on there. What's the problem with the plaque? You should read. The... Dedicated to the Vietnam veterans, date of the conflict, that's it. Well, Gus, that's your area. Do you want to tell the Colonel what we had in mind? Colonel, we thought we'd have a, a special inscription. No big deal, just the names of the 11 men who lost their lives and, and some special inscription. Did you lose a boy over there? No, sir, I didn't. Any of you? Well, then let's just forget this idea. Have a simple plaque. Keep it at that. All I know, she's a fox. Yeah. You know, I'd love to help her with her homework sometime. You don't like doing homework, remember? So? If I was doing it with Margo, I'd love it. Is that all you guys can talk about? Is Margo Diamond? All I know is it's getting pretty hard to listen to old Mrs. Bloomfield with Margo sitting in the front row all the time. You guys, this is a penny. A penny? Yeah, a pretty old penny. We dig around in that pond scum for three old pennies. Yeah, but still, they're pretty neat. You want any more coffee, Gus? Yeah, thanks. Oh, Grandpa, you know the memorial dedication that your club's involved with? Yep. The Air Force Academy is sending out a falconer to be part of the whole ceremony. Must be some show. It's going to be better than good. And my junior ROTC class is supplying the color guard. And I could be part of the whole thing. What well, wouldn't that be nice? Mr. Captain. Yeah? Look what I found. What? What do you got there? Oh, you have here a very nice specimen of an 1878 Indian head penny, my boy. It's gonna be my lucky piece. There's one problem, though, Mom. Why, honey? Well, the program supplies the uniforms, but they won't be here in time for the dedication. That means I have to buy one if I want to be part of the ceremony. Well, maybe I can help you out with that. No, no. That's on me. You go ahead and order the uniform, but your first set of Class A's, that's on me, Ken. Thanks, Grandpa. Mr. Captain. What? What's yellow and brown and the spots all over and about ten legs? I don't know, David. What is? Either do I, but there's one crawling up your arm. Ah! What hey, David! Goodbye, everyone. I can get to lunch. See you later. Bye, Marcus. Mm -hmm. Hey, here, Bye-bye. <laughs> ten legs. <laughs> Gus. What? That Colonel Trask, is he the same guy that's in charge of the ceremony? What's the matter with that guy? He's a hard nose. What did he object to the plaque for, for goodness sake? Grandpa. What? What's long and brown and furry and uh, has about a hundred legs? No, life. Princess, he's not going to fall for that one today. No, no, no. No, look. Isn't he cute? Ooh, I found a whole piece of plants. Mm -hmm. He's a nice little fellow. <laughs> I'm going to name him Charles. Uh -huh. I didn't realize Did you get it? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Where's Colonel Trask? I don't know. Got me. I guess that guy's running the show today. How you doing? Good. 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 Good
As will occasionally happen, Colonel Trask has been called away on other matters. I'm Master Sergeant Ron Sprigg, Assistant Aerospace Science Instructor and the Colonel's second in command. I suggest we get down to business. The program will be divided into three categories. Classwork, which will include a look at the heritage of flight, leadership education, and a study of the aerospace community in general. In addition to the classwork, there will be time spent on the drill field. And lastly, a considerable emphasis on PT. Oh. What's PT? Physical training. Ah. Get that with a spoon. Yes, sir. Stand up, please. If you have something to say with a spoon, let it be for everyone's benefit. I'm sorry. You will find that the behavior that one gets away with in social studies class won't cut it here. You don't talk, pass notes, or clown around. In this class, you pay attention or get out. Now, you wanted to make a statement? No. Then sit down, cadet with a spoon. Wasted enough of our time. Hey, Jim. Right. Didn't you say that your uncle collects pennies? Yeah. So, well, why don't you ask him? Yeah, sure. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hi. If you guys like her so much, why don't you go up and talk to her? Hi, guys. Yeah, right. I'm gonna. Pretty soon. Hi, Shane. You guys are so chicken. Oh, and you're not, Mr. Cool? No, I'm not. Hi, guys. What a nerd. Hi, Margo. Hi. How's it going? How's what going? Uh, look what I found. Oh, look at that. It's so cute. I love old coins. Really? Look at the Indian. I love Indians. You really like it? Uh-huh. Um, why don't you just go ahead and keep it? David, are you sure? Are you sure, David? Sure. David Witherspoon, you must be one of the nicest boys in the whole school. Good afternoon, sir. What did you say? I said good afternoon. No, you said good afternoon, sir. I'm not a sir, I'm a sergeant. Got that? Got it. Uh, Cadet Witherspoon. Steve, come here. Last night's reading assignment. You want to give me a rundown on it? Well? We reviewed the history of the early American flight and the origin of the Air Corps. The Air Corps wasn't mentioned yet. I got a little ahead. When was the Air Corps formed? 1925, 1926. I'm not sure. When did it become the Air Force? Why'd you even bring it up? Arthur, don't squirm her. I can't get this thing undone. Arthur! He just wants to play. That's it. Good afternoon, ladies. Hi, Mr. Kaplan. Gus around? No, Gus, what? Arthur, hold still! What are you doing there? Oh, I'm trying to get his tags changed, but I'm having a devil of a time getting this old tag off because he's going still. Arthur! May I, may I make one small suggestion? Sure, go ahead. Take the old one off. What a good idea. I did it that way for years. 
Good. That dog bit me one time. Oh, my. So now, I always do it the easy way. It's very complicated. I see that. Yeah, you take the thumb and forefinger with the left hand, rotate it in a counterclockwise direction. You got it. Mr. Kaplan, look. What is it? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, I was introduced to your caterpillar yesterday morning. No, that was Charles. This is Diana. I have two now. Well, that's twice the responsibility. It is? Yeah, sure. Now your job is to see that the world gets two more butterflies. That's heavy-duty stuff. And from what I hear, the world needs all the butterflies it can get. Yeah. Come on, Diana. You better get some rest. Now, wow. you, you were saying uh, Gus is where? Oh, Gus. Heavens, yeah. yes. Gus, um... Gus had a call from Buzz Brown down at the Monona Club. Seemed he's kind of concerned about that dedication ceremony and wanted Gus there when he talked to Colonel Trask. So, they're both over at the high school. There. Yeah, no more dog catcher for you. Hi, Gus. Oh. Found out some more today about Colonel Trask. He was a... He was a hero in Vietnam, all right. He also lost his son over there. I was talking to Mayor Hudson about it. He didn't have any details, just the fact that the boy was also in the Air Force. It's hard to figure. I mean, his attitude toward our plaque, don't figure. No. Try to keep you waiting, men. Well, catch a glimpse of your granddaughter out there, Mr. Witherspoon? Yes, sir, I did. She seems to be keeping up all right. She should go far in this Air Force. She has a look about it that Sergeant Spring and I have seen before. Good. Colonel, we'd sure appreciate it if you'd take a look at this agenda for the ceremony. If that meets with your approval, well, we'll make it official. Well, this will work. Still staying with that fancy plaque idea, I see. Well, to be honest with you, Colonel, we were hoping that you might have some ideas for the inscription. Something to honor those men. War wasn't won by a handful of men. Anybody win it? Right. Well, I can't help you. Thanks for your assistance, men. Yeah, I'm with you, Gus. I just don't really understand that, man. The thing of it is, we have other families to be concerned about, so you just go on ahead with the plaque. I will. Good. Listen, Gus. You're an old Marine. Why don't you see if you can't come up with something appropriate for that inscription? Do the best I can. <laughs> Thank you. I noticed that the group <laughs> ran around that big muddy hole out there. Why don't you explain to us why you opted to run through that mess? Because it was a shorter route. Stand up. It was a shorter route. That's how I won. Who said it was a race, Cadet Witherspoon? in a good mood today. What's going on? Well, see that lucky penny of mine? Turned out to be really lucky. Real lucky? Uh-huh. We won the lottery? We get new shoes? Not quite. Uh, uh, but uh, a certain girl in school, who everybody thinks should be Miss Universe or something, happens to think that I am the coolest guy around. But you are the coolest guy around. Nothing to do with having a lucky penny. Sure does, Mom. I gave it to her. Hey, Witherspoon! Hey, lover boy! Yoo-hoo! And now, she thinks that I'm irresistible. <laughs> irresistible. <sighs> Bob, where is Arthur? Well, I think he's in the basement. Why do you want him? Wait till you see what he did to my squash. Arthur! 
Hey, guys, what's hey, up? Hey, how's it going? What the heck is this? Remember that coin, that measly old penny you gave to Margot Diamond? Yeah. Well, we just showed our coins to my uncle. He gave me $37 for mine. He gave me 45 Yeah, and when we told my uncle about yours, like the date on it, he said yours is the best of the three. <laughs> you could have gotten maybe a hundred bucks. <laughs> Come on, dear, let's go check out the hobby shop. See you later, David. Later, man. sick children. Tracy Hooper was given the liver of a nine-year-old accident victim in a four-hour operation. Hooper is in critical but stable condition, normal after such an operation. Her condition will be monitored for 72 hours to see if there's... night for stargazing. Yeah, it's beautiful. There's a Big Dipper. It's about the only one I know about. Well, there's Orion with the belt and the sword. There's Gemini and the dog star. You want to talk to me about anything? No. Not right now, anyway. Okay. Wouldn't surprise me, you know, if someday you were walking around on one of them. It might not be worth the ride. Up in there! What's all the screaming about? like your squash. Don't worry, button. I got some spray in the garage. I'll get rid of them for you. Good. Glad this is no place to have a party. Go on, get off there. Come on. Go on, you guys. Now then, you'll have to come out of there. I don't want to get this on you. Why not? Because it's poison. Poison? I don't want to kill them. I don't want them to grow up to be butterflies. The world needs more butterflies. Well, it's your choice, you know. You can have bugs or crops, but not both. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if they eat everything. And that remote control Ferrari, it's only 30 bucks. Mayor peanuts when you have extra money lying around. <laughs> You know, you guys, in a few weeks, you'll have spent all your money. And I'll stop Margo. Hey, who's that? Uh-oh, that's Steve Callahan. Yeah, Big Steve. Oh, that guy that's been kept back to grade, right? Twice. Did you just go to school? No, I just went to football. Oh, oh. Yeah. hi, Margo. Hi, David. Did you see the Friday Night Special last night on Channel 6? Huh? That, um, vampire thing. Hi. Now, bye. To refresh your memories, yeah. as I know they need refreshing, this is a replica 1903 Springfield rifle. It is a replica for one specific reason, which is, given the opportunity, even this group will be unable to shoot itself in the behind, which does not I'm sorry, mean I'm late, but my Kim le oh, that you will treat the weapon with any less respect. Sorry, man. There may come a day when you'll be carrying live rounds in those clips. If you haven't learned to respect the weapon by then, you or your buddy could die regretting it. I got it, I got it. 
tonight. Fall in, good Edmonds. They filled him with lead. Flight. Jin hut. Right shoulder. Ham. Freeze the head. Ham. Flare. Ham. Oh, that's your Ferris. Come on, get your hand all over me. Oh, come on, bitch. You're going too far to the left. OK. Dance, sit. Hut, hut. Order. Ha! Hooray. Rest. Good work. Good work. Just try it again. The death were the spoon. Ten, hut. Right shoulder. Ha! Present, palm. Flare, palm. Jog it back. Hey, Sarge. Quiet, Ken. You be quiet, Cadet Witherspoon. Louder. I said this isn't fair. If you wanted fair, Cadet Witherspoon, you should have stuck with the Girl Scouts. Hello. Hi, Margo. Sure. How are you? Uh huh. Well, that's great. You know, I think he's uh, right here somewhere. I'll take a look around. Oh, Tom Cruise. Oh, Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Did you want to take the phone? Oh, I'm so sorry. Hello? Yeah, hi. No. No, it's okay. I shouldn't have put it in. No, to keep it, it was a gift. Yeah. You're going steady with Steve Callahan? But he's... Yeah, he's mature, all right. You want to talk about it? There's something to talk about. I blew it. Oh, I don't think you blew it. Maybe you were just thinking with your heart instead of your head. Yeah, I guess you're right. It's oh, my head that's hurting. Well, at least there's one good thing. Getting my coin back. All right, Weatherspoon. Attention. Hut! Red shoulder. Huh. Move your head. Hold your head right straight ahead. Left shoulder. Huh. Port. Huh. Order. Huh. That's not bad. Not bad. Well, Grandpa, that's fine. It's the flare arms that kill me. That's one I don't know, Private. Why do you do that? Why do you walk around me like a vulture? I'm inspecting you, and while I'm inspecting you, look straight ahead. You're gonna need some work, you know, if you're gonna be in that color guard. You know, it's doubtful if I ever get in it. The guy in charge hates me. Oh, he does, does he? Grandpa, he's a demented, sexist bully. And he's in charge of half of the ROCC program. And he's only a sergeant. Keep it up there. He's only a sergeant? I think it's about time you learned. Non-coms run the outfit, honey. Yeah, well, he's not going to be too happy after I talk to the colonel about him. <laughs> after you do what? Talk to the colonel? 
You think maybe the colonel will fix his wagon, do you? Well, maybe if he knows what's really going on. It's your wagon that'll get fixed, you know. All right, come on. Tension. Hot. Right shoulder. Ho! Order. Ho! Well, I guess we'll have to wait till tomorrow to find out if Orville and Wilbur were out of their minds. <laughs> All right, class dismissed. What is it connected with this woman? I'd like to talk to you about a problem that you might not be aware of. Go on. Sergeant Sprague. You have a problem with Sergeant Sprague? Well, yes. I don't know why, but for some reason, he's been really hard on me. Ever since the first day. Well, why don't you take up the matter with Sergeant Sprigg? Why do you come whining to me? I'm not whining. Fool me. I'm sorry. Get out of this room. If Sergeant Sprigg singled you out, I suspect he had a reason. You might spend some time thinking about what that might be. something. What is it? I don't want to bother you. You're not bothering me, little button. Now, there's something on your mind. I need a break anyway. What is it? Do you think I could have a little more space in the garden? You know, if you plant more vines, they'll just get eaten. I know, but couldn't I just have another foot or so, just by the wall? Will you stay out of your mother's impatience? Yeah. OK. Thanks, Grandpa. Oh, Grandpa, whenever I can't think of anything to write, I close my eyes real tight and cross my fingers. And suddenly, really great things come into my head. Thanks. Am I catching you at a bad time? Taking a break. Having a hard time with that inscription, huh? Harder than I thought it'd be. Yeah. Oh, sweetie. What's the matter? Nothing. Oh, baloney. Something's the matter. You gotta look at yourself. I got my wagon fixed, okay? What does that mean, honey? You went to see the colonel, didn't you? I tried to tell you, honey, don't go see that old colonel. What? Grandpa, I don't think I'm up to hearing another lecture right now, OK? That's so. Yes, maybe it's a bad time, huh? No. Maybe it's high time she started listening to somebody that. Look, Grandpa, I'm not sure I'm going to the Air Force Academy anymore anyway, so just leave me alone. I'm not sure you're going either. Pretty snappy little outfit you've got here. Look, Mom, I'm sorry if I let you and Grandpa down. I just didn't know there would be so much junk involved in this training. What do you mean by junk? Mom, this sergeant, it's like he's on some macho ego trip. 
and he pushes people around for no reason at all, and I call that junk. And if it's going to be like this for the next seven years, I'm better off getting out now. Well, I'd call that junk, too. Of course, you may come across a lot of junk in the next seven years or the next 40 years, no matter what you do. Whether you join the Air Force or you don't join the Air Force. Because there are people out there that specialize in junk. You see, there's your medical school junk, and there's your Olympic tryout junk, and, of course, there's always, always, your Air Force junk. Yeah. I think you ought to call your sergeant. Tell him those sleeves are going to be much too short on you. I hope you realize, David, that I'm giving you your coin back, because I don't want you spreading gossip that I'm some kind of material girl or something. I won't spread gossip. Well, anyway, here's your penny. What'd you do to it? I squished it on the railroad track. You squished it? Yeah. I was going to put it on my bracelet. That's when my brother drilled a hole in it. A hole? Of course your penny is as nice as some of my other charms. Margo! You know, the next time you want to drill a hole in something, drill it in your head. carrying on like this, and I think your son would have expected better, frankly. You don't know anything about my son. You mean Captain Thomas Roger Trask? I may know more about him than you think. Jeep hit him. That six he was a fighter pilot, but he was killed in a stupid accident. That make my son any less of an airman? No, sir, I wouldn't think so. A training accident doesn't rate a spot on your piece of brass, does it, Mr. Witherspoon? You said that, Colonel, I didn't. Besides, I don't make the rules. I understand that's the way people see it. I wonder, though, what they think those 11 boys gave up that my son didn't. Okay, just one thing. And what's that, Cadet Witherspoon? Why you've decided to make Aro to seem miserable for me. Which parts haven't appealed to you? Being reprimanded when you talk in class or punished when you're late for drill practice? Cadet, describe to me what happens to fighter pilots as their planes roar down the runway on takeoff. They get tunnel vision due to their intense concentration. They can only see what's right in front of them. Fortunately, it only lasts for a moment, or they'd never stay in the air. What does that have to... You walked in here that first day, and you said the Air Force has always been your dream. Well, that's a long time to have had tunnel vision. It's time to start working with a team and stop trying to outrun them. But I... You told the Colonel that first day 
that you're heading for the Air Force Academy. If I'm tough on you, it's because it's my job to see that if you get there, it's because you've got what it takes to succeed there. It's my job to make sure you can stay in the air. Post that on the board, on your way out. You picked me for the color guard? Don't you think you can handle it? No, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I can handle it. Good. Because if you screw it up, you may discover a whole new Sergeant Sprig. And if you didn't like the old one, I guarantee you're gonna really hate the new one. Thank Air Force Academy Cadet Vandenberg, that wonderful display of air power. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce a man of whom this community has been very proud for many years. He's a man who has served his country valiantly through two wars, and today he is here with us to help us honor those that he fought with in Vietnam. Lieutenant Colonel Roger Trask. We're here today to remember and honor those we have lost. 11 fine young men, 11 Eleven fine young men. I'm sorry, I seem to have lost my place. I think I can say what's most important to say. I can remember. You see, like many of you here today, I lost my son. And I've searched for a reason to explain that loss. The only one I can come up with that makes any sense at all is love of country. That makes these men very special. But today we dedicate Captain Thomas Roger Trask Memorial. In memory of those who died while in the service of their country during Vietnam conflict. We honor the 11 men whose names are inscribed here. James Todd Arthur, Robert Allen Carruthers, Woodrow Hopkins Crump, Cole Albert Ford, Toussaint Tyler Howard, Rolando Paul Lopez, Christopher Ronald Rogers, Joseph Orland Tall Chief, Frederick Homer Stark, James 
Daniel Washington, Robert Eugene Goldberg. Making the team has nothing to do with you. This is my chance to go on the diet that I have been thinking about. My doctor is saying that this is something I am going to have to deal with. I think Mr. Kaplan is dying. Your mom's getting to know the coach real well. Why don't you just shut up, okay? You're going to be sorry you said that. We're about to listen to your daddy's championship game. Why don't you come on and join us? I'm sick of hearing about championship games and just everything. what kids need today are more heroes. He says when he was a boy, the world was full of heroes. Charles Lindbergh, Babe Ruth, Ludwig Kublik. Ludwig Kublik was a railroad man who could shoot marbles with his toes. I told Grandpa that didn't sound too special to me, but he told me heroes are a very private matter. Oh, hey, Bray Bannon. This man that I've been looking for. Well, hello there. Uh-oh. Uh, please don't tell me that you've come all the way down here to try and corral me onto another one of those PTA committees. This is not PTA business. This is mom business. Mom business. 
David left his basketball permission slip at home. Oh, so the rumors are true. Another Witherspoon superstar on the way. <laughs> I don't know about that. But he'll try real hard. He's talked about nothing else ever since the tryouts began. You know, I can remember when Johnny and I used to have our mothers sign these slips. Where's the time gone? I don't know. I never thought I'd be signing them. Well, see you at the games then? Well, if David makes the team, sure. If not, you could always join a PTA committee. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, my biology class is waiting. I'd set a very bad example if I were late. See you later. You're off the hook. Just one time. Oh, then I owe you one. Mm -hmm. See you later. Mm-hmm. Excellent, Bobby. Wake up with a spoon. Come on. Good hustle. Now, did I miss anyone? No All right, fellas, gather around. As you know, we have room for only 12 players. Those of you that didn't make it, I want to thank you for trying out. And remember, there's always next year, so don't give up. Now for the 12 that did. I want to see Parisi, Gonzalez, Yamada, Corrigan, Washington, Costco, Real, Grabowski. Folks, Kaplan has a ball. He fakes to the left. He drives down the court. He sets. He shoots. It's two points. Ah, the crowd goes crazy. Hi, Mr. Kaplan. <laughs> Mr. Kaplan, David is not back from basketball tryouts yet. I could tell David something about basketball. Eh, it beats me why anyone would even want to become a jock. Why do you say that? Competition's bad for the soul. The only way towards inner peace is through meditation. Okay, we're about two minutes away from dinner. Would you please get the girls and uh, make sure their hands are clean before they come to the table? Okay, Mom. Come, come on, on Nikki. And just when the conversation was getting scintillating. <laughs> oh. What's the matter, Mrs. Kaplan? Oh. What's the matter? Oh. Oh, it smells so good. Well, why don't you join us for dinner? No, no, Jesse. I don't think I better do that. No, oh, you love spaghetti. Stick around, eat with us. I can't, Gus. See, the destroyer I was on in the Pacific with the Sixth Fleet is having its uh, reunion in three weeks. Now, we've done this before, but this one is going to be special, see, because uh, we're going to actually climb aboard that old tin can and sail it across the bay, and then we're going to have a big banquet, and the skipper, he wants us to show up in blues. But the problem is, I have gained 15 pounds over the years, and there's no way I'm going to be able to fit into that monkey suit. So, this is my chance to go on the diet that I have been thinking about, and I'm going to be mean and lean from here on in. I'll ask Mom if she can stay for dinner. There's always extra spaghetti. Okay, I don't need the sauce or anything, just the spaghetti. Did you talk to your doctor? This is something that I am going to have to deal with. Wait a second. What is it? Shh. Is in Tucson visiting her cousins, and that's the best thing for both of us at this time. It's going to be okay. As soon as I get it in my head, I just have three weeks. I admire you, my friend. It's a tough thing you're going through. I just have until the 23rd, and that's it. I guess the no. everybody has to what take is it? it eventually. I think Mr. Kaplan is dying. Uh-oh. David? What happened? What was that? It was a skyhook. Just like Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Well, stand there and make some free throws. Get the basics down first. Grandpa? Good one. What? How old was my dad when he started to play basketball? About your age, maybe a little younger. And he'd get up early and he'd practice for hours. Yeah, I will too. Tough game, you know. Takes lots of practice. And it may not be for you. Never really was for me. 
Well, I sure want to give it a shot. Good. Grown-ups sure have a funny way of dealing with life and death and stuff like that. Yeah, I'd an old aunt once. When she died, nobody ever talked about it anymore. They probably did, just not in front of you. No, sir, I even asked my mom about Aunt Myrtle, and she told me life has to go on. That's the grown-up way. Yeah. I guess we have to be grown-up like everyone else. But we should do something for poor Mr. Kaplan. Like what? I don't know. But I'm going to make sure Mr. Kaplan has the best last three weeks on earth anyone ever had. Nikki, huh. doesn't matter to me if you want to study or not. <sighs> All right, so I want to become an expert in popular American culture. Besides, it's a quiz I'm dying taking you. Why worry about that quiz when we have a major history test Monday morning? Uh, spare me, okay? Okay, now this is called Test Your Openness. Ready? Mm-hmm. Shoot. Okay. Would it bother you if a reporter did an honest article about your life, yes or no? No. Me either. Okay, that's five points each. Next question. Do you have a friend you share your deepest secrets with? I don't keep any secrets from you. Goes for me, too. Another five big ones. Next question. Would you ever consider seeing a psychiatrist? Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Did this one draw the line at the shrink's office? Whopping zero. No, I'm talking about the other question. What secrets have you ever shared with me? Everything. You're my best friend. I don't even know where you live. Three points max. That's all you deserve. Gonna play hardball, huh? Hey, I'll take any edge I can get. Yeah, you astronauts are all like. So where do you live? Don't tell me you're gonna make a major case out of this stupid thing. Of course not. Good. Are you mad? Well, why should I be? I mean, my best friend tells me that openness is only worth three points. Hey, give yourself ten points. I don't care. But there are certain things I like knowing about my friends, and knowing where they live is one of them. Lighten up, will you? Me? You ask some stupid question, and then you turn it into a major battle. Stupid is the key word here. Where are you going? Home. And if you're dying to find out where it is, you can always tell me. Oh, Mickey had to go home, huh? I guess so. I'll get it. Hello? Guess who? Oh, hi, Ray. Say, are you, uh, Witherspoon's trying to create a basketball dynasty? David was very impressive today. Oh, <laughs> good. I'll tell him when I see him. Well, I didn't call just on basketball business. This is more like date business. Aren't you going to eat that? I'm thinking. What about? He probably wouldn't want to talk about it. I know how you adults are. Why don't you try me? Well, I was wondering where Mr. Kaplan is right now. Right now? Yeah. Right now, he's probably stumbling around the house, bumping into furniture. Poor Mr. Kaplan bumping into furniture. That's awful. I didn't know you had such a classic taste, huh? <laughs> Nonsense, my dear. Mozzarella becomes you. Mm. Mm. You know, I'm having a pretty good time. Well, I am, too. You are, too. Uh, but? But what? I wanted to ask you something. I've been thinking about it all week. Well, it sounds serious. Well, it is serious. Mm -hmm. It is. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure exactly how to how to bring it up. Well, I've been divorced for three years. That is what you want to know, isn't it? <laughs> no, I knew that. Oh, 
Well, I, I guess I better quit guessing. Why don't you just ask, please? Could you put David on the team because of me? Jesse, David may not be the most polished athlete around. Putting him on the, the team is definitely a gamble. But he does have guts, and he hustles. And maybe because uh, he's Johnny's boy. Other than that, he has made the team on his own, and you had nothing to do with it. Well, that makes me feel real good. Thank you. Well, good. Because now I have to tell you something that you may find very upsetting. What? You have tomato sauce all over your scarf. That's Witherspoon's mom with the coach. No wonder he made the team. Morning, Gus. You want some fruit? No, no, no. The sugar and fruit. Coffee's good. No calories there. Oh, yeah, your diet. I'm on a plateau right now. My body is storing up the lost calories. And soon. There'll be an avalanche. I'll lose a lot of weight suddenly. Really? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm following this uh, special rice cake diet. It's just like eating air. And you know what that means. There's no calories in air, so I'm not getting any calories. <laughs> what do they taste like? Air. Well, but that's good, Gus. When this diet is over, I'm going to really appreciate food. I'll bet. Well, I'm starting to realize how much I enjoy food. It's probably the one thing that I enjoy the most in this life, uh, except Gladys. But then, of course, she's a good cook. Mm. Joe, do you want to take a walk, a nice, brisk walk? That's a good idea. Burn off calories. I don't know what all the fuss is about. You're not fat, you know. Oh, yeah. See this? This is fat. All right. I'll get my hat. You had a problem? Oh. This is for you. What is it? I have no idea. Little Molly left it for Molly. you. Molly? Oh, she didn't have to do that. That was sweet of her. What is this? Mr. Kaplan just wanted you to know I care. Molly. Isn't that nice? Hmm. I bet it's a calorie counter. Oh. Oh. Jelly. My favorite. Huh. All right. <laughs> Hmm. Well, I'll just take an extra long walk, that's all. All right, let's move it in, fellas, fast. Let's get down there. All right, defense, pick up your men. Witherspoon, come on, press your man. You stink, Midget, you know that? How in the world did you ever make this team? Come on, work it in there. How do you think? His mom's special friends with the coach. That's it. <sighs> Why don't you try shooting that shot underhanded? Grandpa, that's weird. Nobody does it like that anymore. Well, a lot of good players did it that way. Did my dad? No. Well? Then I've got to do it the real way, Grandpa, or everybody will think I'm weird. Remember this, though. The real way is the way that works the best for you.
sorry about Friday night. Yeah, I guess we're both pretty silly. You still only deserve three points max. The ice is getting pretty thin, Witherspoon. Watch it. Look, Nikki, I don't know what your problem is, but there's no reason to feel ashamed about your family or anything else. Not with me. Drop it, Chris. Fine. Why do I get the feeling that I haven't heard the last of this? No, what's going on with you? I said I'd drop it. Just bug off, will you? Nikki, wait. Get it, okay? Get it. I can't believe how cold everyone's being about Mr. Kaplan. I mean, no one even cares that he's dying. I told you, adults try not to show their emotions. Well, so I don't think it's very nice. Mmm. Smells great. My mom made chocolate chip cookies. Oh, they look good, too. These are for Mr. Kaplan. Well, I can't eat them. And at this point, you just well throw them out and give them to Joe Kaplan. Boy, that is cold. You won't believe what I found in the attic. A lot of old stuff from college. Hey, gang, let's see. Molly, David, come in here. Coming. How old is that stuff anyway? It's not that old. Gus, look at this. <laughs> David, this is your daddy's letter jacket. He earned it for playing basketball. Come on, come on, try it on. Come on. He wore that thing everywhere. Slept in it. It's a little bit big. Well, you'll grow into it. I finished doing the dishes. I'm going to go practice. I've never seen somebody so determined. Well, the more he practices, the better he'll get. He knows that. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I was wearing this when I met your daddy. So he played basketball, and I was a cheerleader. You were a cheerleader? I was a very good cheerleader, miss. Watch this. Johnny Witherspoon, he's our man. Let's give Johnny a great big hand. All right, Mom. Go get it, Rolly. Come on, David. Hey, you're doing pretty good. I gotta do better. I want to be the fastest player on the team. David. Take a break. Oh, I don't have time. David, what's going on with you? What do you mean? You're just not you. Like last night, when Mom brought out Dad's old varsity jacket, you acted real funny when she asked you to try it on. Look, you're imagining things, OK? Oh, sure. You're practicing your basketball till late at night. You running around here like nothing else mattered in the world is my imagination. Look, there's nothing wrong, OK? David, there's something wrong if you don't enjoy whatever it is you're doing. And I don't think you're enjoying playing basketball. Chris, it's just not fun. I mean, not the stupid drills, not the practices, and not the guys either. Then why don't you quit? Because it's like Grandpa always says. You do one thing too much, and it begins to be a habit. And that includes quitting. David, that might also include beating your head against a stone wall. Chris, did you ever win a race in track? Yeah. And they cheered and everything when you crossed the finish line, huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, they cheered for Dad in his time. And they cheered for you. I just want to know what that feels like. It's so hard to understand. Here he comes. He doesn't look too healthy, does he? That's because he doesn't have too many days left. You can see it in the way he walks. You don't think you'd get mad at us for spying on him, do you? We're not spying. We're just watching over him. Hi, uh, Molly. Hi, Bertha. Act natural, so doesn't suspect anything. Okay. 
Say, I, uh, I want to talk to you guys about the cookies you left on my doorstep. We well, shouldn't have done that. You didn't like them, Mr. Kaplan? That's not the problem at all. They were good. They were very, very good. I ate one, and I think maybe I ate a couple. The problem is, they're not good for me. You're only trying to help. Yeah, we thought you might enjoy them during your last... during the time when Mrs. Kaplan's out of town. Well, uh, thanks, but I'm gonna have to cut the sweets out from here on, so... I'll see you later. I'll get my exercise. You know, I'm walking around the block. Boy, he must really be sick if he can't have any sweets. And he doesn't even complain. My mother would call him a saint. All right, let's go. Come on, defense. Let's just set him up. Set him up. All right, break down there. Let's go. Down there. Come on, hustle. What I want to see with a spoon good hustle. Keep it up. We both know it's with a spoon good at hustling, don't we, Win? Come on, guys. We're strong enough. You're getting to know the coach real well. Why don't you just shut up, okay? You're going to be sorry you said that. I've got a favor to ask. Not right now, honey. I'm cutting up this pepper for the salad. Grandpa. Can't have a salad without a little chili pepper now, can you? You say that about everything you cook. I like them. I'm wondering if you could cover for me right at night for dinner. Ray called and he asked me to an early movie. Another date? I guess you and Mr. Bannon are getting along pretty well. Yes. I think we could probably handle dinner on Friday. In a case like that. Thanks. Mr. Bannon is a very nice man. Uh-oh, Mom. That's the kiss of death. No, it's not. You see, your mother's still uh, of the generation that thinks that's a nice thing to say about a man. Hi, big guy. How was practice? You must be tired, huh? Oh, yeah, we're practicing pretty hard for our first game. It's gonna be against Parkhurst. Could be a good game. Isn't that your school's big rival? Yeah, I guess so. You know, all that rivalry stuff is really silly. It's just another school. Well, I know when your dad was a kid around here playing basketball. That was a school they really wanted to beat. You know, I don't see what all the fuss is about. Basketball is just a stupid game. You got something you want to talk about? Not really. Seemed pretty real downstairs. I know we've been making over David a lot since he decided to take up basketball. I guess that's because David hasn't really found anything for himself since we left Fort Wayne. Mom, I'm not jealous or anything like that. Then what's going on? I can't talk about it. It's the old mom shut out, huh? I can't wait till my children understand that I'm here to help them. I know you are, Mom. I just can't talk about it right now. All right. Okay. Well, when you can, I'll live right next door. No, they don't think anything's wrong with you. I'm the one they're worried about. They think I'm jealous and I was only trying to help you. Look, I can take care of myself. Fine, then tell them the truth. No, I don't see what the big deal is about quitting some stupid team. It's not stupid. Okay, you're right, it's not stupid. But it's not smart doing something you really don't want to do. Just out of pride, either. Mr. Bannon, some people can do things a lot better than they can play basketball. Maybe I'm one of those people. Maybe I'd just better off committing it.
heard of some pretty stupid stunts in my time. This takes a kick. Two days before our first game and you decide to cut classes. Real smart, guys. If you just talk to Mr. Rose, I'm sure he'd let us play. The suspension stands, Bobby. Just because you play basketball doesn't mean you're any better than anyone else in this school. Look, Coach, there's no way we'll win with the four of us sitting out the game. Well, you should have thought of that before you cut the class. I want all of you on the bench in your street clothes on Friday. Let the whole world see how you've let your team down. Anybody not there is off the team for good. Now, go on, get out of here. Something you want to talk to me about? No, Coach. I'll go get dressed for practice. Mr. Kaplan! Now, Molly, no more sweets. I know. Mom made fried chicken last night for dinner. I thought you might like some leftovers. There's so many biscuits, too. Oh, no. Don't you like chicken? Molly. I like chicken. I love greasy fried chicken. I love even more greasy fried chicken with biscuits slathered with butter. Lots of butter. Not margarine. Butter. I've got butter. Molly, you don't understand. I'm trying to tell you I cannot eat that kind of food anymore. I only have six days left. I'm sorry, Mr. Kaplan. I'm so sorry. Uh... Okay, okay. I'll eat the chicken, and I'll eat the biscuits, <laughs> and I'll eat the butter. Hi, big guy. We're about to listen to your daddy's championship game. Why don't you come on and join us? Actually, I've kind of wiped out. I think I'll pass. Well, honey... Grandpa went to a lot of trouble to set up the machine. Look, Mama said I didn't want to listen to it, okay? I'm sick of hearing about championship games and, and just everything. Did I hear it come in? Yeah. Mom, I'm sorry for what I said downstairs. I didn't mean it. You know, I think every little boy in the whole world wants to grow up to be just like his daddy. That's the way it should be. But then, as he gets a little older, maybe, maybe he can't, or maybe he just changes his mind about that. That's part of growing up, part of being your own guy. That's the way it should be. I tried to play basketball with Dad. I know you did, honey. And you know if your daddy were here, he'd be out in that driveway teaching you how. I also know that if he decided he didn't want to be a basketball player, your daddy would support you 100%. Because more than wanting you to be a basketball player, he'd want you to be your own guy. David, if you want to quit the team, you quit the team. Some of the guys 
they got suspended. And we barely have enough place for tomorrow's game. Sounds like you're in quite a fix. Sounds like the team's in quite a fix. I may never be as good as my dad. But I told him I was going to be there. So I'm going to be there. Oh, my. You do sound like your daddy. I do. I thought Grandpa was going to fix dinner. He is. Then what you're doing doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense. Sometimes I have an uncontrollable urge to peel a carrot. And it's the only way to get your Grandpa to cook them for you. This is Nikki's book. How'd that happen? Happened at school. Nikki and I had a little accident. So now she has all my homework. You better give her a call, sweetie. Mom. Mm-hmm. Could this address be right? Later. You've been lying to me this whole time, haven't you? And you pretended to be broke. I never said anything of the sort. Besides, I don't know what's worse, a liar or a snoop. I don't get you, Nikki. You live in one of the nicest houses around here. Yet you're embarrassed by it. See me alone, okay? I will. As soon as I get my own geometry book back. No, I'm not a snoop, but I do like to do my own homework. And somehow, I don't think turning in yours will go over well in class. Two days left for Mr. Kaplan. I'll bet nobody's talked about it. Not even once. You're right. I know what Mr. Kaplan would really like for his last wish. What? To meet someone famous. The only problem is I don't know anyone famous. I do. Who? Mr. Kellerstone. Who's he? He reads the meters for the gas company. What's he famous for? For getting mad at the gas company. Mr. Kellerstone didn't charge anybody on our block for an entire year. Until they found out and sent him to jail. My father sends him chocolates every Christmas. Chocolates are good enough to make a man in prison happy. Maybe that's what we should give Mr. Kaplan. Okay, fellas. 
They may be bigger than us, but we're going to be faster. We are faster. The trick is you've got to believe you can do it. You still want to change your mind about uh, Bobby and those other guys? No way. Okay, guys. Let's go, Wildcats. Let's, Let's go! go! about yesterday, have you? You pull me at a basketball game to ask me that? Look, Chris, I know it's hard for you to understand. Call it impossible, Look, okay? I'm just a private person, and I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't spread any stories. Nikki, in the last week, you've called me stupid, you've called me a snoop, and now you're calling me a gossip. Don't worry. You'll die before they get it out of me. Don't. It's just so hard sometimes. I'm gonna terrific dad. You'd like him. He's got a great sense of humor. He's real good looking. He's a doctor. Fix his tickers. My mom left us a couple years ago. Sorry. I can't blame her. Sometimes dad doesn't even bother to come home. He just crashes at the hospital. He's got so many patients that need him, you know. I figure sometimes if I ever really want to see him, I'm going to have to have a heart attack. But I'm not supposed to be unhappy about it. After all, I'm rich. It makes me different or something. Oh, it doesn't. It's not by me anyway. And that's not the impression I got yesterday when you took one look at my house and tore into me. That's because you didn't tell me the truth. I don't care how rich you are. Believe me, do you? I want to. Thank you. Nikki, you have to ever worry about me, okay? Maybe someday you can learn to trust me. Maybe someday you can even learn to trust yourself. You know what, Witherspoon? Your kind of square has curves in it. <laughs> Come on, you guys. This is for David in the game. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Let's go, fellas. Bring it back. Bring it back. Let's go! 
shot. Shooting two. Knock that off. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Coach, we got a T on the other team. Who's your shooter? Yeah. Witherspoon. shooter than I am. I think he should take the shot. I'm better at him than math, and he skateboards like a real klutz. But he's a good foul shooter, and I'm not, so I think that he should take the shot. Your father was one of the most unselfish, gutty players I ever saw. You sure are his son. Casco, take the shot. I'm sorry, Molly, but this is not a good time to be around me. You know what I mean? I know. Is it catching? What? Never mind. This is something you said you loved more than anything else in the world, so I thought you should have it. Chocolates? Chocolates? Ooh. Is this one chewy? I don't know. Oh, well, my chief petty officer's gonna die when he sees me anyway. Your chief petty officer's gonna die. He's gonna die of laughter because I'm so fat I won't go into my uniform. Because you and Bertha got me off my diet. I gained five pounds instead of losing 15. Diet? But I thought that you were... You saw what? You're not dying? No, I'm not dying. Whatever gave you that idea? I'm so happy. <laughs> sure you're happy. You're not 20 pounds overweight. But I'm glad you're not dying. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. I'll take this back. You're going on a diet. Mmm, cherry cordial. 